All right, everyone, welcome back to the Healthy Body Podcast. I am Brownie, your host, and we're continuing on this week talking about stress and sleep. And I have Rachel Coleman with me, who is a baby sleep coach. And I just thought she was the perfect person, not just to talk about, you know, the importance of sleep, but in particular for women and women who are moms or expecting. So thank you so much for joining us, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Ooh, ooh, I'm so excited. I'm not a mom yet, but I'm going to be taking lots of notes to be prepared or <laughs> awesome. tell my friends who are moms. And so that's correct. Awesome. Yes. So can mm-hmm. you just tell us a little bit about who you are, um, what you mm-hmm. do, maybe about you and your family, your kids, but mm-hmm. then also share a little bit about your story. I know we were talking earlier, kind of what led you to really specifically focus on being a baby sleep coach? Yeah. So mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Rachel, and I am half American, half New Zealand, married to a Swiss husband. So (laughs) that says a lot about me right there. Very international family. Um, Grew up kind of all over the world. um, Very international background. Um, But for the last seven years, um, we've been living in Switzerland since I got married. And uh, we have three kids. Uh, They're five, three, and 10 months old, so very busy household. Um, I'm a homeschooling mom, um, and so sleep is is very important to me and having (laughs) good day rhythms that keep our whole family sane. Um, And yeah, so I'm a sleep coach, and basically what I do is I help families that are struggling with their children's sleep um, find solutions that fit for their family um, and implement them so that their children can sleep the best they can for their biological age. It's not about you know, forcing kids to do something that they can't do for the developmental age, but it's just encouraging, setting those foundations um, so that everybody gets a good, uh, good night's sleep. Um, and basically where it started um, was with my oldest, uh, my daughter, Aaliyah, who is now almost six actually. Um, and she was a terrible sleeper um, from the very beginning. She had acid reflux, um, which didn't get diagnosed um, until she was about three, three months old. And she basically just screamed all the time um, as a newborn. And I had just moved to Switzerland to marry my husband um, about a year before that, year 18 months before that. Um, we had to learn a new language, had to make new friends. I was living in this small village of like 300 people and um, we weren't actually having, planning on having starting our family right then, but she popped along and I was kind of isolated and I had this screaming baby and it was just a very overwhelming um, situation. And I, you know, I had these kind of ideas in my mind before she was born of how I would mother and how I would parent and how all of this sleep and everything would just kind of (laughs) fit into place really naturally. And then it didn't. Um, And yeah, I think with the screaming, you know, I tried all the different things that they said should work, you know, rocking and pacifier and nursing, all of the stuff. And it just, it didn't work. And I think I felt so discouraged as a mom in those that's what I remember feeling is just so discouraged and so depressed um I wasn't diagnosed with postpartum depression um at the time but looking back I'm like 99 percent um sure that I had some form of depression in those early months and you know without having that community around me it was just very um very isolating not many of our friends had kids at that time and um so basically she slept really badly because of the reflux Um, and at one, you know, at one point she was waking like every 45 minutes in the night and was nursing her back to sleep. And, um, it got a little better over time, but even once she was a year old, she was still waking like two to four times in the night. And I was just done. I was so tired. Our marriage was kind of, it was just rough. It was just, you know, we were still together, still committed, but it was just not fun. And, um, yeah, we were just both super tired and basically at our wits end to know how to help this child sleep. And a friend of mine from New Zealand said, Hey, um, I worked with a sleep coach and had these amazing results. Why don't you, you know, try it out? And so I booked, uh, an appointment and I had just an email consultation. So I didn't even have to see, I didn't see anybody. We just did this by email. Um, and within three days of implementing their tips and tricks, um, you know, which kind of were was from nutrition to day routine to sleep environment, all these different things um, together. Within three days of doing those sleep tips, 
my child slept through the night 12 hours um, with not very much crying at all. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is heaven on earth. <laughs> um, why didn't we do this six months ago? Um, and yeah, just after, after having that success, I knew that I wanted to give other moms the, the gift of good sleep, the gift of that peace. It brought so much more calmness into our marriage, into our whole family life. I felt like I could actually enjoy being with my daughter again. Um, our, our routine, you know, it was more predictable so we could do more, you know, outings and stuff like that. And um, yeah, basically since then I have been doing this and have never looked back. So that's just such a great story. And I think, you know, we were talking earlier about just how many moms are probably like, thank you, uh, someone understands, but then, wow, there's hope, you know, just mm -hmm. that we don't have to like just accept that, hey, our child's a bad sleeper or, you know, and, and there might be child, child who just rebel and stuff like that. But, you know, within three days, you just put some couple tips together and things completely totally. reached. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So what were, I mean, if you could share, what were those yeah. three tips that really changed everything for you? I have to say, so nutrition was the big, was a really big one. She was at that time, um, she was drinking too much milk. So her, basically was get, she was getting full on milk and not having enough room for solid foods, which obviously have so many nutrients that are important for sleep. So changing her, her, uh, the timing of her feedings, um, decreasing the milk intake was huge. Um, getting her day routine right was huge. Um, I see this with a lot of clients too. Basically she was overtired. Um, and overtiredness, basically, I mean, it happens to us too, but in babies, it basically stimulates the production of stress hormones, which makes it even harder for the child to fall asleep and to sleep through the night. And so if there's, um, if the child is not getting enough day sleep, then it's actually negatively impacting on that night's sleep. So we change things around there to help her get better day sleep and helping her fall asleep a little bit more independently um, because otherwise she was needing our help consistently in the night to fall back to sleep because she had our help at the beginning of the night. So those were, I think, the three main things that we, um, that we did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Those are so simple yet not, so profound. I know. <laughs> uh, I love, too, that you were just talking about this overtiredness because I think mm -hmm. – of us, even those listening, the women just, we can just be so overtired and like, okay, great. I'm not going to sleep, not going to take that nap. Yeah. And uh, even though we could, some of us couldn't mm -hmm. always do it. And then like, oh, great, I'll sleep at night, but then you're overtired. Yeah. And it actually does not work at all. Like, you know, it's yeah. the whole thing of like keeping a baby up all day so that they sleep better at night. It backfires every time. <laughs> every single time. So every trick for everybody time. listening, take your nap, take your That's little right. siesta. That's right. <laughs> Awesome. So since you've been working with other women, you know, mm -hmm. um, and other moms, what have you seen to be some of like maybe one or two of the main kind of issues that they're struggling with? And what are some of the solutions? It could be these three things, but other things that you kind mm -hmm. of just tell them to do, simple things you tell them to do. I think a lot of the moms, you know, are kind of, they feel in a way trapped, right? They've been doing these things for, you know, the way that they've been doing it for so long. Um, and it's just not working anymore, but they're so tired and they don't have a lot of energy, um, you know, to, to change things. And I think that's one of the main things that I love about my work is actually just coming alongside people and giving them encouragement. Because I think a lot of the moms that I work with, they actually kind of know in some capacity, like, things that they could be working on, but they just don't, they don't have someone to help them through that, someone to help them, you know, stay accountable. And it's super easy for them to kind of, you know, give up or try, you know, switch around all the time. They're not being super consistent. And so I think that's one of the main things is just basically walking alongside people, helping them to be consistent. And um, a lot of the moms that I work with too are, I think they're really scared of there's some negative stuff around sleep coaching or sleep training in general. And a lot of the moms that I talk to, the reason that they haven't sought help is because they feel scared or kind of shamed. It's kind of like seen as a failure. If you're, you know, if you, if you're um, seeking help, it's like, you know, sleep is somehow supposed to <laughs> work 
kind of naturally. And if your child's a bad sleeper, then it's like, okay, you must've done something wrong. And it's even worse if you go and ask for help because sleep training has this negative connotation. Um, and a lot of that is because people think, okay, you know, if I do sleep training, which is often associated, of course, with crying and all of that, that it's going to damage your attachment with your baby. And so a lot of what I do is actually coaching and educating women to, um, to realize that there's lots of different options out there to find an, you know, a, a way, a method that suits your parenting style. It, it's not just cry it out. There's actually so many different ways that we can look at sleep, um, you know, at encouraging a baby to sleep better and finding the way that works for them because the way that works for one mom is not the same thing that's going to work, you know, for another and to try and get rid of that mom guilt. And it's, you know, momming is tough. So I think, um, you know, asking for help is one of the bravest things that you can actually do. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a failure thing. So, yeah. Love that. Momming is tough and asking for help is one of the bravest things you can do. So true. So incredibly true. So what even, I mean, say like moms are listening and like they mm -hmm. are like, okay, great. You know, like I can get my baby to get mm -hmm. sleep or my kid. Mm -hmm. What if they're struggling with sleep? What would you kind of suggest that they do to kind of help them sleep better as well? There's so the, what would the moms, what should the moms be doing? Yeah. Self-care is huge as well. <laughs> so setting aside time, like you were saying, Rihanna, just before, like take your nap <laughs> mm -hmm. if you can. Um, getting people on board. I think creating that community around you of people that, you know, where you can give the kids up for even a couple of hours during the week where you can go have some time to, for yourself to relax, you know, for to your mother-in-law or to a friend or to your husband, um, taking care of yourself. And, you know, I know for myself that actually having a, a good consistent day routine, like with my kids, it means that, you know, my littlest is napping, my older two are doing quiet time. And I actually have an hour and a half of time after lunch where I can sit and either rest, read my book, have a coffee, Skype with a friend if I want to, you know, I have that kind of space. And so I think, I think routine is um, great. It makes you actually more flexible <laughs> in the long run mm -hmm. um, because you kind of, it's predictable and it just gives you those kind of slots of time where, you know, kind of generally, okay, my child's going to go nap then. So that's going to give me that little window of time where I can relax or in the evening, I know that my child's going to go to bed at this and this time. And then I can spend time with my spouse or I can look after myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what would you say to you? I know you did, you talked a little bit about this in the summit we had in August, but mm -hmm. what are the benefits? Like what, what, ha what happens for both the parent and the mm -hmm. child just from a just from a biological, physiological mm -hmm. point of view when you sleep? Mm -hmm. And why is that so important to try to figure out to have a good routine in? Um, so for moms, I mean, it's the benefits are huge just in the fact that we're less stressed. <laughs> we have more patience. Um, science has shown that mothers enjoy their kids a lot more um, when they're when the, yeah, the mom themselves is, is well rested stress in relationships. So with your partner is decreased heaps, um, and maternal depression and, um, you know, uh, is in kind of mental health. Um, the mental health has improved. Depression is decreased by getting that good sleep. And for babies, um, I mean, sleep is the time when, you know, growth is happening. The appetite is regulated. Stress hormones are decreased. Um, you know, learning basically the memories and the things that you've learned over the day, all of those neurons are, are firing and um, you're basically creating those memories. All of that stuff is happening in sleep. And so, um, you know, if a child is waking every hour or every two hours in the night, they're not really getting into that deep, deep sleep where all of that stuff is happening. And so, you know, of course, a newborn is going to wake up every three or four hours in the night to drink because they have that biological need. But as our children get older, it's super important just for their growth and um, yeah, their emotional stability, all of this stuff that they actually get good sleep. And, you know, long-term studies have shown that children that sleep better at night, um, you know, they have less chances of obesity, their health is way better. Uh, they do better in, in 
school, their concentration is higher, even once they reach, you know, preschool and school age. So the benefits are not just for now. And, you know, healthy sleep is not just for, you know, just for mom to get some good time by herself. It's not actually about that. It's actually about enabling the child to be as healthy as they can be as well. And in the long term, not just right now. Yeah, I, th- I think that's really important too. And, and even as you were talking about, so I just read a great book on sleep called Lights Out and I recommend it. It's not not necessarily spe- kid specific, but it's just like what goes on with hormones in behind yeah. the scenes. Mm-hmm. And ladies, hormones is more than just estrogen. I'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people are just, you just, we say that, but there's so many other hormones in your body. And yeah. I think there's similar things that you just said, like growth happens, memories are consolidated. Mm-hmm less chance of obesity, better concentration, better focus, mm-hmm. you know, and it talks a lot about diabetes too. And it, and yeah. it relates it actually all back to yes, our food on our current diet, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. sleep, you know, cause I think we, we get older and we somehow, we, we probably do need less sleep than when we're kids, but mm-hmm. we, we like, I feel like sometimes we cut it too much. We're like, Oh, I can survive on five hours of sleep a night. I'm like, yeah. no, you can't. Yeah. That's so long. <laughs> And it's not yeah. just about surviving. There are things that happen in our body with what you're saying, the, the mm-hmm. stress levels, mm-hmm. same thing with adults. Like yeah. if we're constantly awake, it's telling our bodies, our cortisol levels need to be up because we need to deal yeah. with just the stress of everyday yeah. life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I just think even, you know, all the moms or women or anyone listening, just like those benefits apply to you. It's especially important if you're a kid, of course, because all those things are being formed, but mm-hmm. I think it's especially important the same way as you're saying self-care, you know, maybe mm-hmm. you take a nap when your child takes a nap, like maybe yeah. that's your version of self-care, right? But yep. just sleep is just as important for our kids and as it is for us. And so mm-hmm. um, seeing it as a priority in both of our, you know, both definitely parties lives is really Yeah. Important. And you know, what I like to say too, is, I mean, sleep, you know, and eating, we wouldn't just like drop a meal for our child, right? Because they're just mm-hmm. going to go <laughs> crazy, yeah. right? We can't just leave a snack out because, you know, um, I don't, my three-year-old, you know, I'm hungry, mom. And it's just like, you know, even if he has had a snack an hour later, he's hungry again. And it's just, you know, they are hungry beings. Mm-hmm. And if you just leave a meal out, you know, their behavior is way worse. The tantrums are way worse. And the same happens just like you wouldn't leave a meal out. You wouldn't leave a nap out. Mm -hmm. Um, and it needs to kind of have that same, in my perspective, I mean, of course you can have some flexibility, but I think it is, you know, it needs to have that same importance for your child and, and for you as well. Yeah. Same priority. Yeah. Love that. And I just think it's so, so beautiful what you do because yeah, you're, you're teaching the the child, but you're all, oh, well, the mom for the child, but you're teaching the mom as well and Mm -hmm. the parents how to care for Mm -hmm. themselves. So we -hmm. talked a little bit about this earlier too, just around, I know you mainly serve kind of kids from zero to five years old, mm-hmm. and parents with kids from zero to five, but mm-hmm. you're kind of thinking a little bit along the lines of how can I also serve women who are pregnant so that when they mm-hmm. do have kids, mm-hmm. they're able to kind of know and have a plan and routine versus just praying and hoping, which is great, pray <laughs> on, you know, that your child sleeps well, but yep. actually equipping them with the tools from early on. So um, yeah, what are you thinking around that and supporting women and who are pregnant? Yeah. So yeah, like Brianna said, I think, um, you know, what I've done a lot until now is kind of equipping families that are already struggling um, with, with sleep difficulties. And I love that work, but my heart would actually be to, you know, not just deal with the problem once it arises, but actually to prevent that problem in the first place. And I think a lot of, um, a lot of what's needed there is education and resourcing. Um, I remember as, um, you know, as a young mom, in some ways there was so much information on the internet, but then in some ways there was not enough. Like it wasn't, it wasn't what I needed. It didn't set a good foundation. There was a lot of tips on Google. You know, you can Google just about anything and get some, you know, some tips, but something really concrete of like, this is how you can lay the foundation for healthy sleep habits in the first kind of few weeks of life. So um, what I'm thinking in that um, line, I already have a newborn package um, basically that sets walks you through the first 12 weeks of life with, um, you know, what happens biologically. It's very educational, helps you to prevent overtiredness from building up in those first few weeks, gives you some really good tips on how to slowly, you know, work towards some self-settling, you know, without crying because you're working at it from the very, very beginning, just getting those good routines in place, how to, how to make your child's sleep environment, for example, the best that it can be to, um, 
you know, to be conducive for sleep. Um, so that's something that I'm going to be, it's a, basically it's an ebook at the moment, just a PDF, but I'm going to be creating uh, by the end of the year, an e-course around that with videos, basically walking people step by step through that process. So they can really feel like they have a good foundation. Um, and that would be perfect for like an expectant, expectant mom, um, or someone that's just had a baby. And the other thing that, um, that I'm working on at the moment, I have eBooks that are coming out at the end of October, um, basically day routine eBooks, but they're jam packed with a lot of other, um, tips around, you know, nutrition around sleep environment. And it's the eBooks run from three months till 36 months. So it's basically, you know, you can, you can buy the whole bundle and kind of have this, um, yeah, know what's going to happen in the future, what, when the regressions are going to happen, how your child's routine is going to need to change as they age so that you can be prepared for all of those different things. Because that's what I see so many moms struggle with is, you know, oh, you know, sleep went great till four months, but then boom, something happened and suddenly it's bad. But they weren't really, you know, prepared for that next stage of their child kind of trans, you know, becoming older and not newborn anymore. So um, those are the, those are the things that I'm working on at the moment in that direction. Just love that. Cause I think you're giving hope to all the not pregnant moms out there <laughs> and then pregnant moms, you know, just cause I think the thing is when we, you know, um, and obviously when we're about to choose to, you know, get pregnant or have a baby, I think the thing we, we most, yeah, we most fear maybe like, especially as a new, new mom, like, how do I do this? When mm -hmm. are they hungry? Mm -hmm. But it's the sleep part. Let's be honest. Yeah. Everyone's like, are you guys ready to not sleep? And yeah. all these things, which could happen. But I think I love that you're just like, it doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. you know? Definitely. You can do a couple things to reduce the risk of like, you know, you not mm -hmm. sleeping, them sleep, you know, so mm -hmm. I, just, I think it's an important work because I think what you're saying, you know, you want, you want to enjoy this thing of motherhood and of parenthood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we're both not sleeping well, then it's not yeah. gonna, not going to help with that as much. Yeah, exactly. And it, you know, like you said, you know, it's not just about the whole sleep thing. It's about mm -hmm. the well being of the whole family. Right. So it's about you know enjoying that. And you know, they've even come out with studies recently that um, you know, as when you're pregnant, you can actually do things um, to prepare your child for good sleep. You can actually already start working on that. And that's an area that I myself am not. Um, yet well equipped in, but I would, I'm, you know, going to be reading up on those areas because I find that a fascinating area to actually be able to, you know, preventatively start working on these things so that, you know, it can be, um, yeah, that you can enjoy, basically enjoy your baby to the, <laughs> to the fullest when they come and not, um, you know, some sleep deprivation is totally normal, you know, right. normal, but um, it doesn't have to be something that steals your joy. Yeah. And, and even those for the moms listening to just, you know, seeing the whole well being of the family, I think, you know, moms want to want to care for themselves when they have mm -hmm. kids, but mm -hmm. if they're lacking sleep, if they feel like they don't have a routine, all of that, it's very hard to yeah. even think about, like I even eat sometimes. Right. So I think yes. you're just really, I mean, if I had a baby right now or pregnant, I would be like, <laughs> you know, um, so definitely for all those moms listening at any point, I really encourage them to check out your stuff. So tell us then a little bit about uh, where people can find you on mm -hmm. social media or the World Wide Web. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll talk a little bit about, about your freebie and giveaway. Yeah, awesome. So um, basically my website is www.babysleepcoach.ch. Um, the CH is Switzerland because that's where I've been based for a little while. Um, on there, you'll see all of my sleep packages and different things. You can book a, I do a 15 minute free consult um, on there, which is basically just to get to know each each other kind of chat because um, obviously it's sometimes kind of huge to ask for sleep help. And so I love to actually meet the moms and talk with things, you know, talk things through, give them a few um, really practical tips um, to go away with, but then talk about the other options there too. Um, social media, you can look me up at Sweet Baby Dreams um, Sleep Coaching. That's on Facebook. So those are the main things. Awesome. And Pinterest too. Oh, and Pinterest too. And you Pinterest. also have a great Facebook group. Yes, I actually have just closed my Facebook oh, group. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm focusing more on the blog because I really want right. to focus on this educational side, resourcing yeah. people. Um, and just found that, um, yeah, that's a better way of me being able yeah, to yeah, do Yeah, yeah, And then Facebook so. pages, you know, you have that too. So it's yeah, exactly. So I'm going to be, do I'll be more active on my Facebook yeah. page with, you know, lives and that kind of thing that are a bit more, yeah. um, 
Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your free resource and your giveaway that you. Mm -hmm. So I have a free PDF, an ebook. Um, it's called three steps to better night's sleep. Um, and basically it just outlines a few things of, um, you know, how much sleep does your child need at what, what age? So how to prevent overtiredness basically, and um, just give some really practical tips in there. That's um, freebie. And for the giveaway, I'm going to be um, selling my, my uh, ebook bundle for my day routines um, until October 22nd. They're going to be on pre-order. They're going to be launched on October 22nd and they're going to be on pre-order until then um, at almost a 40% discounted price. Um, so you get four uh, day routine ebooks for $24.97. Um, and that, like I said, those ebooks, that's the day routines uh, that I recommend from three months until 36 months. That's so awesome. I am definitely going to share that with a couple people. Um, but thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like to share with us? Any bits of encouragement for those listening or? I think just, you know, if you're, if you're tired and sleep deprived, I think the main thing is don't feel alone. You're not the only one in this. There are other moms that are out there and um, they're going through the exact same thing and don't feel afraid to ask for help and, um, you know, to work on things. It's not a sign of failure if, if it just doesn't happen. Um, and sometimes just getting someone alongside can be really, really helpful. I know I needed it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much. I am encouraged. Thank you so much. I'm a little, <laughs> feeling so much. a little bit more prepared for the future too. Um, <laughs> But I just really hope people really um, listen and kind of take, uh, take, take away your goodies and your information. So thank you all for listening. Feel, um, be sure to check out the blog post that goes with this uh, podcast so you can get all the links um, that Rachel mentioned. And just so as a reminder for everyone, I am doing some stuff around stress and sleep this month, doing a stress and sleep challenge on October 22nd, free challenge in my group Healthy Body Community for Women. So sign up for that. Uh, at madewell345.com slash stress and sleep. Also check out if you're here locally, I'm doing a stress and sleep class as well as a pregnancy class with oils, but I'm going to go do that on my Facebook page um, live as well. So definitely it just goes hand in hand with what you're talking about. So it's Amazing. perfect. Uh, and so thank you all again and be sure to check out the links and see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.